This 16-inch M3 Max MacBook Pro has the highest configuration you can order today. It has Apple's M3 Max chip with 16-core CPU, 40-core GPU with 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, 16-core neural engine, 120 gigabytes of RAM, 8 terabytes of storage. It has the new and beautiful space black color that you can see that it shows very little fingerprints unless you're touching this after you eat a pizza. I call the first generation Apple Silicon and one Max MacBook Pro the best laptop I have ever used. And it is. But then Apple released M2 Max MacBook Pro, which was better. And then when it was time to release M3 Max MacBook Pro and Apple said it is scary fast, I remembered what I saw while I was watching a video uh, regarding Bugatti trying to break the speed limit. They were talking about how it gets more and more difficult to go faster when you're already going super fast. So I had my doubts and I was wrong. Let's begin with Geekbench. When it comes to Geekbench 6, when we look at the single core score, of course, M3 Max MacBook Pro scores higher than M2 Max and M1 Max MacBook Pro. But when we switch to multi-core score, M3 Max MacBook Pro scores 43.3% higher than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 68.4% higher than M1 Max MacBook Pro. When it comes to compute scores, M3 Max MacBook Pro scores 10.9% higher than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 29.8% higher than M1 Max MacBook Pro. When it comes to Cinebench 2024, when we look at the GPU test, it scores 112% higher than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 182% higher than M1 Max MacBook Pro. When it comes to CPU, the multi-core score 65.8% higher than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 103.8% higher than M1 Max MacBook Pro. When it comes to CPU single core score, it is 17.5% higher than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 24.7% higher than M1 Max MacBook Pro. When it comes to benchmark scores, this machine is on fire. Disk speed. Up until now, the disk speed was varying between M1 Max MacBook Pro to M2 Max MacBook Pro. But this one, when it comes to write speed, it is 19.3% faster than M2 Max MacBook Pro and 16.3% faster than M1 Max MacBook Pro. And when it comes to read speeds, they're head to head, there's not much difference. Of course, now the question is, do you need eight terabytes of storage space? And the answer is no, but let me tell you something. My M1 Max MacBook Pro has eight terabytes of space. And when I was first buying it, of course, it was very expensive and it was not easy to afford it. But when I started using it, the Comfort eight terabyte gave me was incredible. And on M2 Max MacBook Pro, I switched to four terabyte. And that's when I realized how comfortable I was with all my plugins, with all my sound effects, anything you can imagine. Anything you can imagine, you can throw in there. Doesn't matter, you can render files and then you can edit it. And then once you're done, you can of course put it in your backup drive and then gain that space back. And of course you can do it with an external drive. The problem is external drive is gonna drain more battery. External drive is dangling from the side. So you may wanna stick it to the screen, you gotta find a solution, let's say, if you're editing on a plane. And of course, when the external drive heats up, it's gonna slow down. Is it the end of the world? No. Can you make it work? Well, I made it work with my M2 Max Micro Pro, so surely you can. But if you can afford an eight terabyte, it is totally worth it because the comfort is, I can't even explain. Now let's look at some actual projects and see how M3 Max MacBook Pro performs. Let's start with something I know really well, Final Cut Pro 10. When it comes to exporting a giant 8K project to ProRes 422, and one Max MacBook Pro finished this task in seven minutes. M2 Max MacBook Pro finished this task in six minutes and 13 seconds. This machine, M3 Max MacBook Pro, finished it in five minutes 
and 24 seconds. And to put that in perspective, the Intel i9, the 2.4 GHz 2019 model Intel i9 I had, finished the same task in 36 minutes. So <laughs> we have come a long way. This is 85% decrease from i9 to M3 Max MacBook Pro. And then I applied noise reduction in Final Cut Pro. Of course, this is a very GPU heavy process. And I applied it to a one minute video that I shot on my iPhone in ProRes HQ in Apple Log. And the noise reduction amount was set to default. And one Max MacBook Pro finished this task in one minute, 35 seconds. And two Max MacBook Pro finished it in one minute, 15 seconds, which is an improvement. This guy finished it in 59 seconds, which is really close to M2 Ultra. However, when it comes to rendering, there were some processes that didn't use any of the CPU or the GPU. So the results were equal among all the devices. And I'm guessing that's gonna change when they when Apple releases an optimized M3 optimized version of Final Cut, Compressor, Motion 5, or Logic. So there were some you know, tasks that didn't use anything. And it was just the computer was like, okay, I'll do it in my own time. You know, it doesn't matter. It's still fast and equal to the other devices, but you know, we'll see. Because in, in the past it happened, they released an update and the render times changed drastically. So I'm expecting that to happen with this one as well. Now there's one thing I wanna try. I call this one the destroyer. This is basically Yano Box's plugins stacked on one another and we have a counter there all right we're set to better performance and let's see what happens we're gonna have a couple of frames to show how the counter goes The GPU usage is at 79%, 80%. It's just going. I think this is the first device. We're at 77% GPU usage. So I think this is the first machine that didn't even hiccup when it comes to this. You probably know this project by now. This is my iPhone 13 Pro Pro Max review. Let's delete all the generated files so there's no proxy there's no render and let's move here yeah as you can see it's just we're, we're just going we have no trouble at all playing an 8K unrendered video. By the way, this is compressed video. Compressed video is more difficult to play compared to a ProRes video because when it's compressed, the computer also has to uncompress that. It's like, imagine a folded paper. It has to unfold it first, then read what's in it and then put it on the screen. When you are playing back an 8K in ProRes, uh, uncompressed version, uh, the, there's, there's no compression, so everything is easier to play back. So keep that in mind. Let's go inside this project. When you're scrubbing, of course, there's still a little jumping, especially if we go here. You see when I scrub here, it's a lot faster, but over here, there's a little jump here and there. There's a little, well, it is, it is getting better and better. It immediately plays back. It is so much better. So now let's talk about compressor because that's one of my favorite things to test when it comes to these devices. When it comes to regular renders to H.264, M3 Max MacBook Pro performed just like the other ones. There was not much difference. It was a little faster. I'm gonna wait for, as I mentioned before, an update for these apps so we can see the full potential. But when it comes to H.265, I have some news for you. i9 uh, Intel MacBook Pro finished this task in eight hours, 35 minutes, and 37 seconds. 
eight hours. And one Max MacBook Pro finished the same task in five hours and zero one minutes and zero one seconds. M2 Max MacBook Pro finished it in four hours, 35 minutes and 17 seconds. Great upgrade, right? And then M3 Max MacBook Pro finished the same task in three hours, 42 minutes and 45 seconds. This is fantastic. I mean, compared to i9, 56.67% decrease rendering this out. These kind of tasks that takes hours, the cooling down plays a big role. That's why Mac Studio or Mac Pro is gonna keep on rendering this as fast as they can because they can cool down a lot faster. With these devices, the fan starts going and it kind of slows down a little bit. But I really want to test the same thing when I'm in a cold environment, when I go up to Washington or something to see what the result is going to be. When it comes to Lightroom and exporting photos, I took 100 photos from my Sony A1, 50.1 megapixel monster camera. And I took the raw files and put it in Lightroom and I started exporting it. So M1 Max MacBook Pro finished this in 33 seconds, which is fantastic. M2 Max MacBook Pro finished it in 27 seconds, which is even better. This machine finished it, M3 Max MacBook Pro finished it in 19 seconds. This is so close to uh, M2 Ultra Max Studio. And then I copied and pasted settings to the photos and M1 Max MacBook Pro finished this in six seconds. M2 Max MacBook Pro, five seconds and then this guy in three seconds which is once again really close to m2 ultra all right logic pro i took little naz's song the spatial version and i bounced it to 24 bit wave file and this song has 140 plus tracks m1 max macbook pro finished it in 42 seconds m2 max macbook pro finished it in 40 seconds m3 max macbook pro finished it in 28 seconds and m2 ultra finished it in 28 seconds it is head to head and then i switched to blender and I rendered an image that I downloaded, it's a demo project. And you can render this in two ways. You can either use the CPU or the GPU. So to see the CPU difference, I first picked the CPU and M1 Max finished it in 17 minutes and 29 seconds. M2 Max MacBook Pro finished it in 14 minutes and 56 seconds. M3 Max MacBook Pro finished it in eight minutes and 45 seconds. M2 Ultra finished the same task in seven minutes and 34 seconds. When you switch to GPU, which you probably should, M1 Max MacBook Pro finishes the same task, the same image in three minutes and eight seconds. M2 Max MacBook Pro finishes it in two minutes and 26 seconds. And M3 Max MacBook Pro finishes in one minute and 19 seconds. M2 Ultra finishes in one minute and 13 seconds. The screen brightness in HDR mode, in regular mode, while you're not watching HDR, is brighter with the new M3 MacBook Pro. And I tested it and I found out with my lux meter that it is for M1 Max MacBook Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pro was giving me 580 lux and this in the SDR mode gave me 730 lux. When you switch to HDR, they're pretty much the same, but M3 Max MacBook Pro was brighter. It gave me 1400 lux, where the other ones were giving me 1350 and 60 lux. When you don't look at a full screen, but you look at something like this, that section of the screen becomes even brighter. And when I did that, M3 Max MacBook Pro had 1890 lux, which was a little ahead of M2 Max and M1 Max MacBook Pro. So when it comes to speed, as you can see, whatever you do, it is clearly faster. It is so much better than, uh, it is better than M2 Max MacBook Pro and so much better than M1 Max MacBook Pro. And I guess that is why they were mostly trying to pull your attention towards M1 Max MacBook Pro because you don't need to upgrade every year. You can upgrade every two years, which is, seems like the healthy way of upgrading. So compared to M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is still a really, really good, you know, laptop, uh, this is so much faster and it's gonna make things so much easier for you. As a content creator, let me tell you what that means. When you're doing a project, not a lot of people saw my uh, review about Sony A7C Mark II, 
But the beginning of that video was very, very difficult to make. And because M2 Ultra is so capable, it was just up to my imagination to how much I can push the project. And when a computer is that capable, that's basically what's happening to you. Now you're thinking about, okay, I have this tool in my hand, it is super fast, where's the limit and what can I do with it? And I remember years ago, even adding a text to the video was slowing everything down. So we were thinking, ah, maybe we're fine without adding a text. And here we are rotoscoping every frame because we can. So in that sense, this machine is very, very inspiring, but it doesn't end there. Because this machine has ray tracing, I started playing games on it and let me show you, it is really good. And because the screen is ProMotion, it goes up to 120 Hertz. And if you're playing a game in HDR, it just looks fantastic. All right, now I think because it is, the resolution is so high, you do not see this because it's super tiny. But I'm playing in 60 frames per second and I can move around, you know. I can play the game all I want. When you start playing a game, it switches to the game mode, which puts everything it has into the, the computer. And I actually just realized this, we're not plugged into power right now. We're playing on battery. And yeah, it's going well. I enjoyed uh, playing games on this machine a lot. Never had any issues. It's, it's, I just wish there are more games now. Can we have Cyberpunk on this? I wanna play Spider-Man on this. Bring the games, bring the games. We have the control, where are the games? This thing also has the AV1 decoder and what that means is anything being streamed to your computer that you watch like Twitch, YouTube and other streaming services, it can use the AV1 decoder which takes less space, gives you higher quality image which is gonna be easier to watch with wasting you know less internet and less data. So that's really nice to have on this computer. When it comes to this color, I actually love it. It really shows the capability of this device. Yeah, it shows very little fingerprint. I mean, the keys usually show more fingerprints. And compared to Space Gray, I think it has more... Mm, mm, it's like a sports car to me, so I, I like that quite a lot. And there are some things that hasn't changed, of course. The camera on top is 1080p, and that hasn't changed. It has three microphone array, and it has six speakers with force cancelling and it sounds as good as M2 Max MacBook Pro. It is the same weight, same size, everything uh, physically is the same. So if you have a case for this, it's gonna match. Now my wish list is the Face ID and I feel like I want the Apple Pencil support on the screen. I don't care about touch screen that much, but maybe the pencil support can be nice. When it comes to wallpapers, we have some wallpapers here, this, this and then this so they put my initial there thank you very much i think it's an f yeah thank you so that's pretty much it that's what i've seen from my tests from everything i do i did it on this computer the gap between m1 max macbook pro and m2 max macbook pro let's say it was this big and the gap between m2 max macbook pro and m3 max mac pro is definitely bigger. This is really close to M2 Ultra Mac Studio and, and it's just fantastic to have this kind of power right under your hand. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video showed you the capabilities of this device. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'm really curious if you're gonna pick up one of these. What did you think about this laptop? What did you think about its performance? Let me know in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoş çakalın.